They are the truest physical representation of the darkness we have yet fought. A twisted race defined by pain and dark magic, their kill count is quite literally immeasurable. No other foe we have faced to date has instilled the same sense of fear and desperation. Whether armed with sword or with claw, their collective goal is singular and simple. Devour the light. If the Destiny universe has boogeymen, you could not find a better candidate than the Hive. They are the stuff of nightmares, ranging from chitin-armored hulking beasts to desperate flailing masses of bone and teeth. First discovered in our campaigns within the rusted remains of the Cosmodrome, the Hive are amongst the most fierce of our enemies. Their strict hierarchy is entirely based on a might-makes-right mentality that they define as the sword logic. The more they kill, the more power they are granted by the Deep. This power has grown to such levels that the most powerful of the Hive have learned to control death, to separate their spirits from their physical forms and be reborn each time their living vessel reaches its end. As such, the oldest of the Hive have existed for billions upon billions of years, making them the oldest confirmed beings in the Destiny universe. Out of all the enemies we've faced in Destiny, the Hive are also by far the ones we know the most about. Much of this is thanks to the knowledge of Eris Morn, sole survivor of a failed delve deep into the Hive structures within the Moon, whose extended encounters with the Hive left her devoid of light, but also the foremost expert on Hive magic and tactics. The Hive are also the only enemy race to have a well-established history and creation story, which I will attempt to extremely condense. Once a relatively weak race, the first three Hive were sisters and princesses on a planet named Fundament, named Arash, Shiro, and Sathona. The planet was surrounded by 52 moons on which lived other alien races who were, at the time, under the watch and protection of the Traveler. After their father was killed in a coup, the three fled and swore revenge on the mastermind of the coup, Taux. Diving through the oceans on the planet, the three found and were granted their powers via the Worms, a group of five godlike beings who offered the first hive immortality and power so long as they each followed their base desires. The three took on the new names Oryx, Shivuarath, and Savathun, respectively. In return, the Worms demanded that the Hive go out into the universe and capture light to feed their hunger, to forever chase the Traveler as to ensure the Worms were never imprisoned again. The Worms acted as a direct medium between the Hive and the Formless One, the Darkness, and would only give power if they felt it was earned. Eventually, the three were granted so much power that they could hide their spirits away in areas called Ascendant Realms as to survive the death of their physical forms. They then proceeded to fight one another for tens of thousands of years without fear of a true death, continuously outsmarting and outfighting one another, which further impressed the Worms, who continuously granted them more power, basically defining the sword logic that might makes right. After billions of years of war, the Hive began to realize that they could never fully appease the Worms. Oryx, in a show of ultimate power, killed her sisters as to take their power and then slew the Worm God Akka as to directly commune with the Darkness, which the Hive deem the Deep. Through his direct contact in conversation with the Deep, Oryx was reborn as Oryx, the Taken King, by far the most powerful individual foe we have yet faced. And yes, meaning that he was at first a she. Oryx now, for the first time, had the ability to take, to transform his enemies into an army of twisted, deep-tainted versions of themselves. He took a piece of Akka's corpse and carved it into his flagship, 
the Dreadnought, which is also where he chose to put his Ascendant Realm. Fast forward a few billion more years, and the three rulers of the Hive have split. Crota has absolutely crushed the Guardians on the moon, and the Hive have tracked down the Traveler to Earth, planning to invade. What they didn't count on was the tenacity of the Guardians. Seriously, the list of notable members of the Hive that the Guardians have slain is far too long to go over in complete detail, but it's important to touch on the big ones. Before meeting Eris Morn, our only serious encounter with the Hive was in our assault on Fogoth, the Untamed, a massive ogre mutated by torture and dark magic as to form it into a great weapon to use against the city. Soon after its death, we learned that much deeper, darker threats awaited us within the moon in the form of Crota. Through Eris's guidance, the Guardians slew Omnigul, Will of Crota, destroyed Crota's soul in the physical realm, then invaded his ascendant realm within which Crota was slain once and for all. Furious, Oryx turns his full attention on Earth and the Traveler, choosing to invade personally with an armada. Marasov, having secretly planned with Eris Morn, sends her full armada against Oryx as a delaying tactic, as Oryx destroys both her fleet as well as his own. Oryx is forced to stay in the outer solar system near Saturn, as his military might is severely hampered by the action, buying time for the Guardians to plan a counterattack. To Oryx though, death and time are entirely relative. He can rebuild an army incredibly quickly. The first to feel his wrath were the Cabal, who suffered horrendous casualties on Phobos, which in turn would lead to the Cabal Skyburners crashing their vessel into the side of the Dreadnought as the spearhead of a full assault. The Guardians arrived soon after, and through Eris Morn's guidance once again, were able to destroy Oryx in both physical form and within his Ascendant Realm, deep within the Dreadnought. While we know an enormous amount about their past and were at nearly constant war with them in Destiny 1, very few hints have been given to us about the Hive and the Taken status in Destiny 2, although there's a ton we can speculate on. Tolan the Shattered, a member of Eris Morn's doomed fire team and an expert on the Hive, still exists in spirit in some form and he is not happy with the Guardians. He deeply believes that there must be someone or something at the head of the Hive, a new Taken King as per the sword logic. The Grimoire card King's Fall, which is Tolan's response to the Guardian's defeat of Oryx, reads, You fools! You disastrous, bumbling squanderers! It's not right! Who now shall be the first navigator? Lord of Shapes, Harrowed God, Taken King! Not you! You might have been kings and queens of the deep, but you have toppled Oryx and you have not replaced him. There must be a strongest one. It is the architecture of these spaces. Why are you leaving? This great power, the title of Taken King and direct contact with the deep is now essentially up for grabs. The only two things we can truly confirm regarding the Hive and Taken in Destiny 2 are that the Hive are currently on Saturn's moon Titan, and that the Taken are able to exist beyond their creator's death, meaning there is a leaderless army waiting for a new commander. And there are plenty of candidates. The two most obvious of these candidates are the sisters of Oryx, Shivu Arath and Savathun. We have yet to have any idea of their powers or even their appearances, but their status as leaders of the Hive gives us at least an idea of the immense threat they pose. Shivu Arath in particular seems to be a daunting threat. She is the Hive's god of war and left her siblings as to feel less constrained in her never-ending quest for battle. Savathun, Witch Queen of the Hive, chose to sail her fleet through a black hole as she believed that whatever she would find beyond it would give her more power, the likes of which we can hardly even begin to speculate. 
Savathun is also currently the commander of Korea, a taken mind whom she originally tricked Crota into allowing into Oryx's Ascendant Realm. In fact, it was Korea who relayed its knowledge of the Hive's power structure to the rest of the Vex, which would eventually lead to the Vex's worship of the Black Heart. The threat of Vex technology combined with the true sword logic is immense, and Korea may be the highest ranking Taken champion left, and yet another candidate to being the heir of Oryx's power. There is also the figure of Taux, the tutor and eventual coup leader on Fundament. Taux is a constant target of the Hive, an object of their hatred. Should she still live after these billions of years since the fall of Fundament, the power of the Taken King would appear to be a great prize to her. And not to be forgotten as well is Nocris, of whom we know literally nothing other than the fact that Nocris's statue is directly outside Oryx's throne room on the Dreadnought. We do not know if Nocris is a brother of Crota, a mother of Crota, or just simply a high-ranking Hive General. But their existence alone and the appearance of this statue alongside Crota means that this is a very, very powerful Hive enemy. But not to be forgotten are the two figures whose plot led to the eventual downfall of the Taken King, Marasov and Eris Morn. We have multiple hints pointing towards Marasov having survived Oryx's onslaught at Saturn and we are also well aware of her tendency to use the powers of her enemies to her own benefit. For her to seek the power to take, to wish to command the immense armies of the Hive and Taken, would befit her. Whatever threat may come on the immediate horizon from the Hive, we will face them without the guidance of Eris Morn. Her grimoire card, where she is speaking to a comatose Asher Mir, states, I am leaving, my old friend. The man in the bed did not stir. Soon I will take my leave of this. She put her hands up to take in the med bay, the city, the tower, earth. Lie. She placed a gloved hand on the back of his blue flesh and bone hand. I wish we could have spoken, you and I, one last time. But my story here is done. I have avenged those I lost. I must find. She stopped, and beneath the gauze on her face all three eyes closed. For a moment she allowed herself to feel the dark tears that flowed unending down her face. The eyes reopened, and her strength blazed in the darkness. I must find a new path through the night. The hive are vast and ancient a power from far beyond our realm. If we are ever to truly face them, ever truly to put an end to their hate, I must step beyond the safety of the city. She lifted her head and looked beyond the window to the horizon, to the grand sweep of the walls, the edge of humanity's reach. Be safe, Jensum Scribe. A storm is coming and I will not be at your side when it finds its way to our shores. With these words and a gathered locus of power, she was gone. Eris Morn knows that the threat of the Hive is not gone. There are still far too many powerful figures amongst the Hive ranks to even consider Oryx's defeat the end of the race. Oryx's death has left a void that the Hive will surely rush to fill with all the tenacity and ruthlessness that has defined the race for billions of years. The Taken War may be over, but the Hive and the Taken persist, as they always have. After all, how can you truly defeat a race that has conquered death itself? Thank you for watching. This has been Scan with GLHF TV.